Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, we're gonna walk through uh, Twitter, see what people are sharing on social media. I'll interject my financial opinions as we go. Uh, it's generally related to three different topics, wealth building, commodities, and or financial topics. So let's just dive right in, see what's going on in social media. You can follow me at finding underscore finance and you can join our community at finding value.com. We still have leap as the coupon code. Uh, if you're interested. So new yield curve inversion <clears throat> record length of 18 months. So the yield curve has been inverted for 18 consecutive months. That is the new record exceeding the 17 month precedent that was set from 1978 to 1980. So are we overdue for a correction in the market where the yield curve uninverts? I don't know. Uh, it seems like this has been drawn out quite a bit. And it has been. It's a record <laughs> for the yield curve inversion. So we're looking at gold. Gold starting to move higher. Gold generally starts to move when things slow down. So maybe the yield curve might uninvert. Maybe it won't. Difficult one to uh, to call here. And I know when it started to first invert, a lot of people were calling for a recession. And that was immediately after it inverted. And I was like, hold on, this could stay inverted for a while. And that has been the case. Uh, but at some point it will uninvert. It could potentially have an impact on the market where we see a slowdown. And I don't know if we're there yet. That's the weird thing, because if you look at unemployment, it is pretty low and it stayed quite low. So we'll see. And I've got another one later on of yield curve, uh, inversion and unemployment overlaid on top of each other. Complete Savage and one of the best cyclical investors of all time. Robati having like 40% of his AUM in Tidewater, which... If you've been a part of our community, we are also in Tidewater from a very early entry point. And BLDR is just legendary stuff. BLDR, I looked at this chart. Let's look at real look at it real quick. Uh, BLDR is a builder's first source. Look at this chart, guys. <laughs> He's crushing it if he entered it down here. Uh, these are building su supply materials for um, housing. And housing is in a shortage. We're going to build a lot more new homes. This is probably going to go higher. I'm not going to buy it up here, but a uh, really good entry point if you bought it really low on this breakout here. Basically, you've got a breakout of this, this spot. It gave you the nice, good slingshot false breakout right in 2020 and just ripping just ripping so yeah this guy great picks there really good picks energy headline news uh is u.s shale production finally nearing its peak shale well decline rates are accelerating and production is expected to plateau or even decline soon upstream oil and gas companies are merging and acquiring assets to improve their long-term shale well productivity. Guys, this is like huge if this thing is in fact peaking and we're gonna get declines soon. I mean, this is going to be a monster setup in oil. And you know, if we do get that type of setup, I wonder where do all of the profits go in a world where oil is Short. What does that look like? And the only two conclusions that I have confidence in, where I've got pretty good confidence, is obviously the oil sector is going to do well. Uh, anything in the world that can increase production while the world peaks and eventually declines is going to make so much money it will be insane. And there's, there's a few areas in the world that can still grow production, and I'm in those companies that can do that. 
Another thing that I think will do very well and was observed in history in the 1970s, I think oil service companies are just going to do ballistic stuff because you can drill more, but you're going to get less, which means you have to drill a lot more uh, new wells. So if we get a peak and we get a decline and oil prices go up, I think it will put all of the energy service companies into a shortage because drilling activity could increase rapidly. That, that could be an outcome. So that is another outcome that I think could potentially occur. And I also think that precious metals, least risk way to play it is physical metals because people are going to start to question the way that the entire uh, currency system and bond markets are set up and even the stock market. It's all predicated off of future growth. Future growth is all predicated off of future energy expansion. And right now, the whole world is set up around oil. And if you have a decline in oil, you have a decline in future growth of GDP, of all these other things that people don't really think about. And last time we had a squeeze in energy, which was the 1970s in America, in America only, we saw a gigantic move in gold and silver uh, and also oil services. I think that is coming up again, the same setup. But it's not just America, it's the entire world. So I think it's it's gonna be it's gonna be like with the intensity times 10. <laughs> it's it's gonna be such a great setup for certain uh, sectors in the market. Chinese stock valuations have fallen to levels unseen since 2018 and are significantly cheaper than the US. As Warren Buffett always says, be greedy when others are fearful. Now, here's, a, here's another thing. Maybe there's a reason that this is cheap. Maybe we're going to go into war and people pulled out because they know that war is a high likelihood. I don't know. But that is interesting. And it is very cheap. Monthly mortgage payments needed to buy a medium-priced home for sale in the U.S. In 2020, it was 1500 bucks. In 2024, $2,700. That's an 80% increase over the last four years. This is the payment uh, increase over time. Wouldn't it be really good to buy a house in 2020 uh, with the low interest rate before that interest rate started to creep back up? Yeah. Lance says, one thing to keep in mind with charts like this, the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage rate in 85 was 13%. In 2022, 3.76. In 2024, about 7%. The millennials looking at 2022, the baby boomers went through their home buying years. Uh, this is roughly what it looked like. And then the millennials, uh, that's what that looks like. Now, keep in mind the payments at a 13% rate versus a 7% rate are probably pretty close, in, in, is my guess. Pretty close. Uh, uranium investors pay attention. So it says, UXC President Jonathan Hins tells Bloomberg that the uranium spot price recently reached a bottom, adding the fundamentals are still strong with increased demand and supply that hasn't fully responded. We're still in a bull market, guys. Uh, Top-down charts. We've got inflation is no longer a problem, or is it? Inflation resurgence risk is rising. Keep an eye on commodities. So global manufacturing PMI has turned up, and so has the S&P. This is the uh, commodity index that is also turned up, and it looks like commodities could be turning up here with the PMI. Which one do you choose? Uh, do you put one that's gonna ready to head lower or is it underneath to go higher? I'm the underneath camp to go higher. I'm gonna show you another chart later on of why I creamed my pants after seeing uh, this chart in XLE. He's zoomed in on this. You gotta see the one <laughs> where it's zoomed out. 
It looks ridiculous, guys. I I don't know if I can get any more bullish after looking at that chart. I'm just like, God, that looks so good. I, I love the big long-term chart patterns coming to a tip that's ready to break out, which I think this is a breakout to the upside. Uh, I also think it uh, goes along with, and even if this goes down for a little bit, I'm still going to be bullish because the short term just doesn't matter because we break this, it's going to be a big old run, just like silver breaking its 50-year chart pattern as well. Uh, Game of Trade says this is this will be a major warning sign for the economy. The yield curve steepening has system systemic systematically, sorry, systematically led to a rise in the unemployment rate. Well, they're interlinked. And the unemployment rate in a lot of these were from the housing market laying off people, home builders laying off people, and, and unemployment coming from those sectors. We're not there yet, guys. Completions just went to 1.7 million. That was up 20%. I think we got a long way to go. We have to get to an overbuilt state if the recession is going to come from real estate. Now, it could come from somewhere else. I'm not stating that we can't have one. But generally, the big, the big real estate crashes, they come from uh, the real estate market. And right now, the real estate market still looks strong. It's still holding on and homes are selling. Here's the Haynesville rigs. You can see it's down quite a bit with natural gas. This will impact some of our energy service stocks, but uh, it will be probably a rough ride through, I would say, this year. We're going to have to get through it. Uh, best six months ends in April. After five months of solid gains, are markets ready for a pause? Bullish presidential cycle sitting president pattern flattens out the mid-February to late March seasonal retreat considerably without 2020 in the average. I'm not the chart looks like you can see that we basically flatten out for a couple of months here. That's probably going to be the case. And then maybe we resume after or, or at the beginning of uh, summer. The home insurance shock hitting California is getting worse. State Farm will non-renew approximately 30,000 home insurance policies and 42,000 apartment policies. State Farm already stopped writing new California policies last year and raised rates by average of 20%. You know, my rate went way up with my insurance and I had to switch my home insurance. Uh, it went up by like 50%. I swapped to another uh, insurance, which was the same price that I was paying before. So, they wanted to increase it dramatically on me. I'll just say that. It was a dramatic increase. Actually, it was more than 50%. It was like 60%. Christine says 16-year base. Now, this is the chart that I'm still cleaning my pants from. It says, but recent bets by US jail only make sense. To believe. So I'm going to go through this. This will be the seventh attempt for the energy sector XLE to break out of this 16-year base. I do think the breakout is pretty imminent. With crude oil getting a weekly buy signal and inflation leveling off as the Fed signals, they plan to eventually loosen monetary policy. Look at this chart, guys. It is absolutely awesome, in my opinion. So this is XLE. XLE is kind of the large ETF. Uh, it doesn't have the big inverted head and shoulders like the small, uh, smaller ETFs do that I go over, like XOP and stuff. But look at this. We've got resistance through here. We have a false breakout. Totally agree with that. Came all the way back down to the bottom of the market in 2020. That's where I was purchasing my shares at this bottom in September, October of 2020. We rode all the way back up to resistance. Hit our head, came back. Hit our head again, came back less. Hit our head again, came back less. We are literally working our way through the sellers right here. Now, if we break this pattern, guys, this is a big, big, big pattern going back to 2008. Bigger the pattern, bigger the base, the higher in space. We're going to get a launch here. We are going to get a launch. Now, what's crazy is there are some companies that have already broken up. Um, there's quite a few. Some of the top companies that I own 
are almost at, at 52 week highs. So I'm pretty sure this is probably going to break to the upside. We're going to get a big run here. And if we see the tightness, the physical market tightness that has been going on with our inventories, if shale does roll over, which a lot of people are speculating that the shale is going to roll over or go flat in 2024, it'll roll over in 2025. Oil is going to move. It is going to move. And the companies that we have with some of the leverage that they've got, they're high cost producers. They are going to print money. They are going to literally print it and put it in their account. <laughs> and then eventually it's going to make its way to my account or your account if you own it. So this one is the one that I creep the pants with. Uh, it, is, it is a definite top creamer here. I love this thing, guys. I love this pattern. It looks really good. I am ultra bullish on oil. Um, I think that oil is, well, one, it's the number one commodity, the master commodity. I think it is the most important thing to wealth building and for life. It is the cornerstone of our uh, economy. It's the cornerstone of wealth building for humans. It will be very apparent if we run into shortages of oil, just how valuable it really is. I also think that this could spur what I think would be the largest bull market in, in physical precious metals that we will ever see. It's going to raise the cost curves for miners. It's going to do a lot of different things. And we are going to have to figure out a lot of different ways uh, going forward, if this does pan out where we, we hit like a peak in oil or plateau in oil for a while. So it's going to be a very interesting setup. That's what I'll say. I love it. The copper elite neatly showcased in one graphic. It says when mining copper, it's great to be big. And I totally agree with that. So here is the copper chart of the biggest producers in the world. We've got Freeport. BHP, uh, this is a Chinese company it looks like, Glencore, we've got Southern Copper, First Quantum, Anglo-American, uh, KGHM, we've got Anto Fagusta, Rio Tinto, Kaz Minerals, Lundin Mining, Vale, Tech Resources, Barrett Gold, and Boladin. Pretty cool chart. And yes, I have investments in this because I think copper is going to crush it. Bitcoin miners versus Bitcoin. It looks like we've got a false breakout, a false breakdown, which will break to the upside. But here's the thing, guys. With all the having, I just think going into the Bitcoin miners is an uphill battle with all those havings. Um, I think it is probably more beneficial if you are going to play Bitcoin to just play the Bitcoin itself than the miners. But maybe this has a big move to the upside in it, perhaps. I, I just wouldn't like the havings. Um, convincing anyone to buy home builders, new residential, is close to impossible. These stocks beat the market almost every single year and every HF continually fades. We have a massive housing shortage. Prices are reaccelerating, and the Fed mostly doesn't care. It's really amazing. I agree. The setup is there. We've got a shortage in homes, house prices. Uh, yeah, inventories are incredibly low. It's just going to put pressure on home builders to build more homes. And we're going to have to build a lot more new homes. And they're going to make more money. Nat Gas Baker Hughes rig count is down four for gas, down one for oil, and down four in the Haynesville. And I'm just sharing this, letting you guys know the updates for drilling. It does impact energy service companies and the dr onshore drillers, and it does impact the exploration production companies because they're cutting back, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It could give us a better buying opportunity with the rig count going down a little bit. I think this will bottom in the second half of 2024, and I think we're going to go up in rig count from there on out. So I think the bottom is being made 
uh, in quarter two of 2024. That, that would be my guess. Uh, freight futures, AM update, we've got Cape Size and Panamax both down 3% 1% respectively. And then the tankers are flat in terms of their freight futures. Uh, Grady said, uh, on the gold, so he said gold's going to break out in USD. It now has. Remember that in the end, nothing matters but price, absolutely nothing. One heard the metals will never rise again talk while we caught all the latest lows at the service. Most were calling for much lower, but that was not the case. Repeating thinking and behavior that does not work is not the way forward. Learn, adapt, change. Most play the market with their emotions. They react to everything. Plus, they have no strategy or trading rules. They do the same thing over and over without changing. To succeed in trading, it is vital not to participate in this emotional roller coaster, but make use of it instead. Sorry, guys. In trading, investing, one must ignore bias, emotions, and all those market narratives. Plus, all those talking heads, since most of them have to be wrong for a big turn to happen, need the right tools, mindset, and experience. And the commitment of traders report is historically useless at major lows. For example, 08 and 2016. Almost every time they are short for a long time into a resumed bull, for many reasons. The back test to the blue support line below was also, also a stealthily weekly cycle low, which I called it the service. Ponder that gold is now only on week five of what should be a very strong weekly cycle with three months of upside. Here, one needs to be very clear about one's strategy. And here it is, gold spot price break into the upside. Here we go, baby. That's all I'm going to say. And yes, we are. I am looking at all these uh, gold and silver mining companies and stuff for potential investment. Despite Fed, BOJ, and other central banks' forecast policy rates flip-flopping to and from over the past 18 months, markets have still gone up as financial conditions ease. Wonder why? More liquidity. More liquidity has been entering this market, which is leading to an increase in share price. Robert Friedland says, Jeffrey's updates on copper. The fundamental outlook for copper is improving faster than we had previously anticipated. Based on our supply and demand forecasts, the copper market is entering an extended period of deficits now. We expect this to lead to declining inventories and higher prices sooner than we had previously anticipated. The supply response to these higher prices will take too long to balance the market as the lead time to bring new capacity online is greater than five years for brownfields and greater than 10 years for greenfield projects. If growth in supply lags, growth in underlying demand, as we expect, then demand destruction will, need, will be needed for the market to balance. This demand destruction will require a significantly higher price. Ultimately, we believe the copper price will need to rise enough to incentivize the development of new greenfield projects that the world will need to meet demand. But that incentive price is well above $5 a pound. If copper goes from four to $6 a pound, as we expect over the next two to three years, copper mining equities should roughly double on average. This leverage to the copper price is a cyclical upturn is clearly the reason to own the equities in our view. So that is Jeffries. Gold, latest. After fulfilling all my targets from the coil, I'm looking at 12 to 20 moving averages for support so we can carry up to my next targets in gold of 22.66 and 23.20 is where he thinks we're going in gold. And I agree, we're going higher. Brady says, yes, the COMEX will run out. Yes, precious metals manipulation will end. Yes, the US dollar will lose reserve status. Yes, East will take over. Yes, the US debt ceiling will be raised the 80th time. 
No, do not spend precious time on posts, videos that just exploits the given. Yes, focus on preparing action and price. I like it. And that's where we're going to end it, guys. So give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website if you guys like. We still have the discount coupon code LEAP going on if you want to try it. 50% off the first uh, month goes to regular pricing after or a larger discount on the yearly. And anyone can switch to a yearly if you're already on a monthly. No big deal. Uh, we have a 5 p.m. question and answer session coming up on Sunday uh, this weekend. So uh, we'll see you there. And that's all I've got for today. So catch you later. This is Finding Value.